So I know I have a lot of videos about hot tub chemicals and maintenance and things like that. You've probably watched some of my other ones, but I wanted to do just a bare bones, simple video about how you can maintain your hot tub in just 30 minutes a week and have it always be ready to go every single time you want to soak without any major hassles or headaches or things that make you just want to go crazy and sell the thing. So that's what we're getting into today in this video. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from Hot Tub Owner HQ and I'm glad you're here with me. So first, of course, you want to test your water. What I like to do is test it every time I get out of the hot tub after I've been soaking. That way it's ready to go the next time I want to get back in and I don't have to test it before I get in, realize that something is off, adjust it, and then wait a while before I can actually soak. So every single time you get out of your hot tub, assuming you get in at least two or three times a week, just dip a test strip in like I'm going to do right now. Shake it off. You want to dip it in the water about two seconds. Then you're going to kind of hold it up here. You can see that my chlorine levels are actually kind of high. That's because I just shocked my hot tub a minute ago. And then you can see that the alkalinity actually is probably a hair low and maybe the pH. So I can actually adjust those up right now because they are a hair low. The chlorine levels, like I said, I shocked my hot tub about 20 minutes ago. So it's not surprising that the levels are a little bit high. I can just turn the jets on after I add my chemical to raise the pH and the alkalinity that will naturally aerate the water and kind of disperse that chlorine throughout the hot tub's water. And really it'll go down pretty quickly to a normal level. I do actually have the power off right now though because I always turn it off when I shoot my videos. So dip a test strip in every single time you get out and then make any minor adjustments that need to be made. Turn the jets on, ideally leave the cover off while those jets run for about 15, 20 minutes. And then just cover it back up, go about your business, and it will be ready to go the next time you're ready to go. So that, of course, was really talking about sanitizer because that's the thing that we add to our water most frequently. Either bromine or chlorine can be liquid, powder, or tablet. I do prefer bromine tablets in a floater. That way I can just put four or five in into the thing. You can see my floater way back over there, but I put four or five tablets in about once a week. Then I don't have to worry about it at all. But then I do have to shock my water. So how often do you shock your water? You shock your water about once a week, maybe a quarter cup of shock. You can either use chlorine-based shock or you can use non-chlorine-based shock. Usually I have been using non-chlorine shock lately, ever since I tried out the non-chlorine shock from the Mav Aqueduct people. They actually sent me some products to test out. I did a review video of that on my channel because I'd never used their chemicals before and I wanted to see what it was like. If you haven't watched that video, and you're curious, check it out right up here. I've got to put a little card up there. But normally I have been using their non-chlorine based shock. I actually took that bottle to my girlfriend's house though because she has a hot tub over there. So I didn't have it handy today. So I did actually use chlorine based shock today, but I have been enjoying using that non-chlorine shock. But about once a week is perfect for shocking your hot tub. You really don't need to use it any more frequently than that. Unless you've had a big party and a bunch of people were getting in the hot tub. I've got three daughters and two of them are teenagers and they come over with their friends and maybe they've got lotions and perfumes and things like that and makeup. All of that gets in the hot tub's water. So I do tend to shock it after a bunch of my daughter's friends have been in there just to kind of like keep everything at bay. So pH and alkalinity are very important in your hot tub's water. But do you have to adjust those every single time once a week or more than once a week? The answer is typically no. Usually you adjust the alkalinity first because you'll never be able to balance the pH if you don't get the alkalinity right, but they do go hand in hand. Most chemicals that affect one will affect the other one as well, up or down. And even if you get something that says pH up or down, it will affect the alkalinity at least a little bit. So just be aware of that. But typically I do try and get the alkalinity right first, then I balance the pH. Most of the time I do that after I've refilled the hot tub, after draining and refilling, which you should do about once every three months or so. Most of the time I very rarely have to adjust it after that. However, I did notice earlier today that my alkalinity and pH levels were astronomically low, which is highly out of the ordinary. But my daughters and their friends have been using the hot tub a lot this week. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. It's also been raining here this week. So it's a possibility that maybe they didn't close the cover fully and a lot of rainwater got into the hot tub, which of course would not be normally balanced the way hot tubs water would be. So I did actually have to adjust that. And then as you saw at the beginning, of 
this video. I actually still need to raise it up just a little bit more. But normally, at most, you'd have to adjust those things maybe once or twice a month, and that's only after a period of heavy use. And more often, it's gonna be pH and not alkalinity. So mostly, you're gonna be adjusting those things after you've done a water change. Real quick, before we keep going, if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like it, hit that like button for me. It sends a great signal to YouTube's algorithm, then they're gonna show my videos to more people just like you, helps me help more people, reach more people, and grow my channel. So I really appreciate your taking the time to do that. Next, we've got hot tub filters. So how do you clean those, and how much time does it take? I have two filters. They're located under that little drink caddy right there, and I take them out about once every three weeks. I just take them to the kitchen sink. I put them in a five-gallon bucket. That way they're not dripping all over the house. And then I just hose them down with a kitchen sprayer. And I do that about once every three weeks or so. I'm not using any chemicals. I'm not using any detergents. I'm just rinsing them off. There's going to be a little dirt in between the pleats. You will notice some brown runoff into your sink. There may be leaves and other debris trapped in there as well. So give them a good thorough cleaning. It takes maybe five, ten minutes, depending on how many filters you have. If you just have one, it'll easily be under five minutes. But if you have two, it might be a little bit over that. And then, like I said, about once every three weeks or so, you're going to be golden as far as that goes. But every three months, I do a deep chemical soak of those filters. I put them in a five gallon bucket. I put in about eight ounces of this power soak product from Spa Depot. I'm gonna link to that down below. And then I fill the bucket with hot water and I let them sit for one hour. Then when the hour is up, I rinse them off with that same kitchen sink sprayer because I do wanna get all that chemical residue off of there. Then I take them back out and I put them back in. There are some people who say, oh, you've gotta dry your hot tub's filter before you put it back in your hot tub. And I'm kind of like, well, it was wet coming out. It's going to get wet in just a second. Why do I need to let it dry before I put it back into water? So then we get into draining and refilling the water. And I did mention that a second ago. So I like to drain my hot tub about every three months or so. I do use a submersible pump to do that because then I can drain it in about 15 minutes. It goes really quickly. Then I use a wet dry vac to kind of suck up just the little remaining pools of water that are going to be on the bottom floor of where you put your feet, basically. And that gets most of the water out of the hot tub. It is not mission critical to get every single ounce out of your hot tub because you're going to be filling it back up again with fresh water. So even if there's a tiny bit of bacteria or debris in there, it's really going to get seriously diluted by filling it back up with fresh water. Now, obviously, if there are large pieces of debris or really brown, nasty water, yes, I would try and get that up. Worst case scenario, you can use some towels, some old rags or something, and kind of mop that up if that's the case. Then I take another clean rag and maybe some white vinegar, and I just kind of wipe down the shell, get rid of any scum lines, get rid of any caked on debris that you feel when you rub your hands along the side of it. I don't spend a large amount of time doing that, maybe five minutes or so. And then I fill it back up again with water from the hose. That takes maybe an hour, hour and a half to fill it up, but it will take about eight hours or so to actually heat up all the way. And I don't turn the power on until the water level is at least about where the jets are, because otherwise it might kick in and then those jets might spray. And if you've got the cover off, then it's just going to be shooting water everywhere. So I do wait for the water level to get above the jets before I turn the power back on. And then from that point, it will take about eight hours to fully heat back up again. I do have a lot of videos that go into the specifics of each one of these things that I'm talking about. So if you want to dive in deeper, I'm going to link to all all of those videos down in the description below and that way you can pick the one that you want to dive into deeper the most and the next thing I want to touch on is your cover because the cover does require some maintenance and for that purpose I think I'm gonna close my cover so you can see it a little better I use a hot tub cover lifter because it allows me to take the cover on or off and especially my teenage daughters on or off without it going flying over the edge and crashing to the ground which over time will destroy both the seams of the vinyl cover as well as the foam inserts inside. So a hot tub cover is invaluable for your hot tub and for the lifespan of your hot tub. It can probably actually extend the life of your hot tub's cover by maybe as much as three to five years. So it's well worth investing in one of those. But let me close my cover now so you can kind of see it a little bit better. So the first thing that I like to do, probably about once a month, is just wipe down the cover with some protectant. That could be Armorall, but I actually prefer 
303 Marine Protectant. I think it does a little bit better of a job. I just spray it right on here and then I wipe it down with a cover. As you'll see, mine actually has a couple of places where the seams have torn and it's exposing the styrofoam inside. Over time, that will get waterlogged, could start to mildew. I don't want that. So as you see here, I put a strip of Gorilla Tape there to kind of protect that seam. I need to do that again in the middle. This cover though is probably nearing the end of its lifespan. So sometime in the next year, I probably will want to replace this. If they had brown Gorilla Tape, I certainly would have used that because it would be a little bit less noticeable than this white stuff. But my primary goal is to keep the seams sealed so that water isn't getting inside the cover and soaking the styrofoam blocks that are inside of here. Do those things on us. Like I said, I, I, I wipe it down about once a month or so, and then make sure and tape up any seams or holes that you have in your cover so that you can protect the insides. But that's really simple and doesn't take a lot of time. And even the taping, I just measured it out, cut a strip, taped it there, and I'm good to go. Anyway, I hope this video helps you. If you wanna know more about which sanitizer you should use, chlorine or bromine, I do have a video where I break down all of the pros and cons of both. It's not totally cut and dried. I do use bromine, but there are some good reasons why you might want to use chlorine, and I cover them all in that video. So check it out right up here. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.